Jeffrey, I'd like to do a run-through. The summit of Mount Kilimanjaro, the plumage of the rarest birds of paradise, the crest of a cosmoceratops, even the rings of Saturn, trifles, all robbed of their feeble glory in the presence of the most astonishing natural wonder of all. The human vagina. Tell me I'm wrong. Tell me there's something, anything in nature that surpasses the wonder, the sheer primal awesomeness of vaginas. You cannot do it, because deep inside, if you're honest with yourself, you know I'm right. So why then, why, why, I ask, is the vagina treated like some kind of leper? Avoided publicly, snickered at privately, its synonyms and euphemisms all slurs, some even doubly offensive to us felines, bleeped out on broadcast TV like there was something contagious contained in its syllables. Maybe. It's time to change this. Maybe, just maybe. We can do it with language, with, as it were, some cunning lingua franca, wink, wink. What if we state boldly and proudly that vaginas are good? No. Astounding. Astounding. How? I suggest that when you see the greatest examples of human achievement, when you see something that inspires deep awe, you say not that it is awesome, but instead that it is vaginal. Observe. Humans landing on the moon, awesome, no. Vaginal. The building of the Mesoamerican pyramids without the aid of the wheel, unspeakably vaginal. The paintings of that one artist who paints flowers that look like vaginas, doubly vaginal. The wisdom of Sun Tsu, turn the page, Jeffrey. The wisdom of Sun Tzu, totally vaginal. A lion riding a manta ray, unquestionably vaginal. America, it's time to recognize that the vagina is totally vaginal. Join me. Tell me what you think is vaginal at thatsvaginal.com. Yes, that should do nicely. To the UN!